Hi everybody, um, welcome, welcome again at four o'clock on a weekday. Um, I really hope that some of you have found the time to uh, to watch. If not, it's obviously on replay if you want to, or it will be posted on YouTube. But today I'm so excited. I can't believe it was just yesterday we finished our Lake District picture, because what we're going to do today is so totally different um, to that. And it's something that um, something that I used to do years ago. I never actually got into the making cards thing because, well, I don't really send any cards, so it was a bit silly. But I did love all the bits that card makers had. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, we're going to do an art journal. Um, well, I'm going to do an art journal. You can do a scrapbook if you wish. And there is a difference. The difference is that with an art journal, you've got space on the page to actually journal, to write things. You know, today we went to the coast, whatever. Um, today the dog jumped over the moon, whatever. Says hi. hi, Sharon. And um, nice of you to join us, Sharon. Thank you. So really, you can... Make yours an art journal, like mine's going to be, and you can pick topics that are relevant to you. I'm going to show you topics that I just want to do. I mean, the first one is fashion, which has got nothing to do with me. I am not fashion conscious. I never have been even when I was a kid. I never was fashion conscious. Um, but I've decided that the first, my first bit was going to be on fashion. And since I decided that, I have had three thousand million ideas of what to put on this little spread here all of which are just not going to fit in hi paula um thank you for the shout out on your paint and a pint if you haven't seen paula's paint and a pint at lunchtime it's on fairy chic emporium go to replay and watch that it was a very funny one today manda was there um and manda's always always lovely uh, not that you want paula but manda's very lovely um, so, yeah, our first one's on fashion. If you want to do a scrapbook, that's fine, but you just won't have any space to do your journaling in. It's probably an easier format to do, actually, because you can put anything you want on. And you don't need to leave space or create space um, for journaling. So it's up to you, art journal or sketchbook. Either way, it's a whole lot of fun. So that's mine. I've showed it to you before on several occasions. I haven't even taken the label off it because I love it so much. <laughs> so at some stage, probably not today though, it's going to get worked into. And once you get that first page worked into, it's not so bad. So today I thought we'd talk about backgrounds, how we can achieve them, what we need for them. Um, how to make the page have some texture, some interest, right from the first thing that you put on it. And I just wanted to show you some books that I have collected throughout the year, throughout the years. Um, largely Mr. Fixit, to be honest. He's so good. He's always skanking around charity shops and old bookshops and skips. Anywhere, really, that there's skanking to be had, he'll be there. Um, I don't know where this came from. A lot of stuff. It came home about two or three years ago from the auctions where we were actually looking for furniture to paint and uh, it came home with I don't know I'll say 12 banana boxes full of cardstock, papers, stamps, ink blocks, whoever it was must have been a card maker I think and I just thought just clear that out I just I haven't got room for it in my house and I know how she feels. Um, and so I'm happy to be still on screen at the minute because I'm still yabbering. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he came back with all this stuff. And, and I mean, I can't remember what he paid for it, but it was, it was less than £20. And it was just all good stuff, but I wasn't actually using it at the time. So it's kicked around in our back room for a while. We've also got a storage locker because I haven't got enough room in the back room. Um but he's been on a quest this last week to track down as much of it as he could. And I think this was in it. These are cards and envelopes, which if you are um, 
art journaling they're really good you you know you can leave the card inside blank so you can journal into that and you can decorate the envelope to your heart's content uh, this salvage magazine when I was doing my degree I used to get this all the time it's 9.95 an issue so as soon as I could I dropped out of that one it was always a bit kind of um, far out for me to be honest but in this one in particular I think it's this one there's some beautiful I, funnily enough this is the degree that I did um, Bachelor of Honours uh, Bachelor of Arts Honours and Textiles with the Open College of the Arts. That just happens to be there. But look at that. That is just a beautiful thing, actually, um, as is that. And as you go through, you, you just see things that you think, oh, I mean, look, look at these. If you put a sepia um, wash over that, it's beautiful. You just have to start thinking like that. And whereas that's not really any good for us with fashion, you know, we'll come in at some stage um, and then we move into these tweeds. I mean, look at that. Look at them, they're just beautiful. This has even got a Harris tweed stamp on it. Really gorgeous. So there's some good ripping out to be done on that one. And if you want to save it, you know, you don't want to use it all up on one thing, photocop um, photograph it and print it or scan it in and, and print it. Uh, this is a colouring book, 99p, Frank Lloyd Wright designs. I mean, look at those. Just look at those. You could colour those into your heart's content. Um, Paula, here's one for you, Flower Fairies. Carol says Hi, Carol. Thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot. Um, I know you're not into flowers, Paula, but I know you love your fairies. So um, on each spread of this, there's a little fairy. Holly fairy. Oh, they're just gorgeous. I mean, look at the little nasturtium fairy. I mean, you just, on a page, how gorgeous would that look? Just, it just would. And you've got this over here as well that you make use of. But as I say, if you don't want to spoil your book or you think you might want to use it again, it's always a good idea. Just scan it in and print it. Or as I say, take a photograph with your camera, your phone, and uh, print it out. Loads of lovely ones there i love that rose i love roses um flowers and trees this one would have come from a charity shop i think really nice things people i don't know how that got there crayons it's another one that's not too brilliant but look at this one i don't know if it tells yeah one pound thirty from save the children But look at the images in here. I'm not suggesting you're going to, I mean, I'm not suggesting you're going to go out on your first day and you're going to find something quite as glorious as this. But keep foraging. Art journaling and scrapbooking, it's all about foraging. There's just some amazing images. I mean, some of you may have um, decoupage napkins that you've already got butterflies on or roses or whatever it may be no reason that you can't use those either uh, anything kind of goes with this design source book for crafters oh two pound just to fix it was feeling flush that day mind you it is a nice book must have been pocket money day, pocket money day indeed I and mean, look at all these initials that you can um, paint to your own a colourway that you want for your page and these as well. This book is just literally full of fantastic things. Amanda says hi. Hi Amanda! Blind me! I've won out over Poirot! I must have been one she'd seen. That's all I can say. <laughs> it was lovely seeing you today Amanda, it really was. I think about you often. Uh, so that's that book. So yeah, get yourselves into the charity shops, into you know the Oxfam bookshop or whatever it is. Have a good rummage around, see what you can find. So that's that. We've covered decoupage tissues, which you can put on um, with impunity, pretty much. I mean, I've got several dozen. Uh, deco These are just two that are on the top. I look at that toucan; it's just gorgeous. And roses and, oh, I mean, you know, you, I've got a great big box of it there. Look, there's a butterfly there already, ready for going. 
That's a very pretty one. I'm sure you've all got absolutely adequate supplies of... Um, yeah, me they just keep coming. <laughs> just, just, uh, I have an embarrassing amount of decoupage napkins further completed. Oh, yeah, I really like those ones. They're really nice. Um, come from Mazda, oh, yeah, I haven't bought them from Waitrose or anywhere, anywhere upmarket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they have come from, actually. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't matter anyway. Um, and I also have quite a lot of Zazzle tissue paper as well. Uh, if you're a hoarder like me, this is... This is the job for you, art journaling and scrapbooking, because you do actually use some stuff up, <laughs> which is really good. All right, so let's just get rid of me now. <laughs> You've seen enough of me for the day. And I want to introduce you to something um, that I was introduced to about six or seven years ago. It's a glorious thing. And it is. A jelly plate. It's a plate, you can just see it there. It's how to describe it's almost tacky, but it's not. I'm guessing it's silicon. I didn't take very good care of my jelly plates. I'm sorry about that. But when they come, they come with a plastic sheet for the top and the bottom. And when you put them away each time, you're supposed to put the plastic sheet on to keep them nice. I mean, when, when Mr. Fix It found it in the back bedroom, they were disgusting. I mean, I hadn't even washed them before I'd put them away. It was shameful. So that's a six by six one, and um, this one is an eight by 10. Same sort of thing. When you get them, they're a good deal clearer than this. <laughs> and I suggest that you take a baby wipe at the end of every session, clean it off with a baby wipe, and put them away with the sticky bits of plastic that you get top and bottom yeah but they do naturally stain over time and it doesn't affect the usage. oh it doesn't affect the use I mean, at all what they're for yet, of course. no i yeah. haven't told you what they're for yeah. they are called jelly plates g-e-l-l-i jelly plates and they are for jelly plate printing and it's at this stage i really want to introduce you to this lady called hillary Beatty. hillary is just one of life's lovely souls she really is. Her and her dog, Dixter. Um, and she's come up with this book, The Gentle-ish Art of Jellaping, which is jelly painting. Uh, and it's, if your library's got it or anything like that, it's worth getting. I don't often refer to books. Um, I much prefer just to look things up on Google, have a look, YouTube, whatever it may be. It's instant. You get your answer. But this has just got so many really good ideas in that you want to visit and revisit um, that I, I would think about, you know, perhaps think about that. Let's put that over there. So how much are these jelly plates? Have you the Facebook page? No, I haven't. Hillary has a Facebook page, which is really, really worth going to. Uh, you know, it's brimming over with ideas. Uh, you'll see it there running across the bottom of the screen. Hillary B, colon, original art and design. And I really suggest that you go there, uh, like a page, you won't get bombarded at all, um, and have a look and see what she's been up to. She she does tend to err uh, towards stitching into her finished pieces, but there's nothing wrong with that, you know. And she has some just brilliant ideas. She does massive quilts and they're fantastic. Anyway, back to these uh, jelly plates. Now, I just looked them up just before we came on. And the 6x6 six at Amazon seems to be on an offer today. I don't know how long it's going to last. But it was £12. And the large one was £21. Um, I have put a link into Jackson's because I'm not sure. I'm an Amazon Prime customer, so I'm not sure if it's just an offer for Prime people or what. But have, have yourself a little look around um, around the web and see, because I'm pretty sure when we finished here, you will want a jelly plate. The, the medium that you use on jelly plate is acrylic. Uh, and I've chosen today to use my cheaper acrylics 
not my lovely expensive acrylics. I'm doing the rounds, but you can't see because I've gone. Um, so I'm, I'm using the uh, graduate acrylics, De La Romy, the Liquitex Basics, uh, Reeves acrylic, Hobbycraft acrylic. But then I also found in the box... Hi, Georgia. Thanks for joining us. She shared for you. Oh, you're a blooming star. Uh, I also found in the box, and I must have been using these the last time when I put them away, are these sh um, schminky ones. I'm quite sure that they were quite expensive. They look expensive. Um, but there's a yellow ochre, a vermilion red, stainium white, and a gold. So I've left them out because I might just use them, but I'm pretty sure that cheaper ones would work too. They do recommend that you use... You couldn't get me a drink, could you please? All this gabbing's drying me out. Um, they do recommend that you use something like Golden Open that stays open for a bit longer, allows you longer to work. Yeah, in an ideal world, but it's not um, not absolutely necessary. So what do you need to print them out onto? What do you pull your prints off on? Well, you can pull them onto... Thank you so much. Excuse me, guys. Too much talking. You can pull them off onto um, ordinary photocopy paper or card. Doesn't work very well on shiny card, to be fair, uh, and it does tend to stick to the plate if you use shiny card. Actually, uh, watercolor paper, cartridge paper, or I also have a thing called deli paper somewhere in here. Yeah, uh, which I bought at Hillary's shop. Hillary, if you go to Hillary's um, Facebook page, you'll see she's got a shop in there, and she has. Everything that you would ever need to use with a jelly plate. It's um, a danger, one of those dangerous places. Deli paper is thin. It takes a very good print. You can sew through it um, should you wish to. Glues down nicely. It's quite thin. You know what I mean by deli paper. It's the stuff that you get your sandwich in or your subway. Subway, yeah, yeah that that sort of thing. It's quite sort of. Um, Wrap up your hand in the yeah, it's like wax paper, but I don't think it is wax paper. I think that's a different thing. So, deli paper. But how much did I pay for that? This is bearing in mind this is a good few years ago. Twenty five sheets of fourteen by eighteen, and it was two pounds fifty. So, it wasn't dear at the time, but I'm not saying what it is now because I don't know. You will also need a brayer to smooth your paint out properly, and uh, it's a good idea to have a, a sketchbook or blank paper or something beside you just to take the the excess off your brayer so as you're not wasting the paint, just put it over another page. It's quite ridiculous how much stuff I've got in here. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Right, so the first ones I'm going to do, I'm going to do on uh, deli paper just to, just to get us going. Uh, the things that you can use to make textures are, well, as varied as you can think. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I've got hair stuck on that. It's really adding to the... <laughs> adding to it. I can't get that off. <laughs> okay, I'll use a six-inch one. Fair enough. Well, oh, the hair on that as well. There, yeah, I think that's a cat's hair, actually. Surprise me. It gets everywhere. Yeah, the cat seems to like to come and sit on my seat when I'm not uh, doing anything. So things that you can get texture into your jelly plate with. Even kitchen towel. And this is a cheap one from the pound shop. So, you know, if it does it, any will. So we'll try that in a bit. Um, Rick wrap braid you can use. Bearing in mind this is kind of fashion oriented. Well, I'll keep looking at the camera and you're not there. Sorry. Um, so I've got some zips. Two of these I'm actually not going to use because they're metallic. And I just worry if I push them into the jelly plate, if it might make a um, permanent mark, which I don't want to happen. I've just got some scraps here of some watercolour paper. I was painting on the other paint, painting, printing, whatever. 
on the other side of it, but you know, one side's still perfectly good, so I'll pull some prints on that. In the top right corner. Yeah, just now I'm missing myself. <laughs> you can't see yourself talking. I can't see myself talking, that's better. Um, and I have a needle here with some. Um, oh, I'm not used to seeing me there. Hello. Um, a needle with some cotton in, which I thought might make quite a nice, pull quite a nice print. Um, this sort of fashion spreading over in a bit into sewing, to be honest. I've got loads of threads there, which we can spread out. I've got my moon maker, which you can use. Uh, I've also got this bit of knitting, which I think would look really quite nice if you impress that in there. Um, but we'll see about all these things. I've got some scraps of fabric, some threads, a little bit of fabric that I sold that I thought would make a nice texture. That's just a spare bit of fabric doing nothing really. And bubble wrap. And everybody, when you get bubble wrap, out there, oh, bubble wrap. Yes, oh, bubble wrap. But it makes a really good mark. So, you know, don't, don't diss it too much. It's good. Uh, this was a set I got from Derwent some while ago. I've used all the crayons and everything out of it, um, but still left in it is some cards, which we can print on and then leave the inside, perhaps stamp on it or something, for journaling, which would be perfect. And they come with envelopes, which I think will fit down the side of my scrapbook. I think so anyway. I'm not sure on that one. Lace. Lace is a good thing to get texture with. Really, all we're looking for at this stage is something to give us texture for the background of our page. I know, it's really bizarre. Put yeah, right put side. me on the other side. I don't like it. Make it no. <laughs> That's better. Uh, this is just different lace. I mean, I'm sure we don't need all that. Uh, these buttons here, I don't really want to use them for texture because they'll just get all covered in paint, but I think when we come to putting the top things on our page, these are actually quite nice. Um, I cannot, for the love of me, remember where I bought them, but I know they were dead cheap and they're really quite nice, aren't they? And then we can use stencils. So I've got that one, that one, that one, that one. I mean, we do cut our own stencils, so it would be poor show if I was actually short of stencils, wouldn't it? Um, that's just a, a piece of waste card. I'm not really sure what it's doing there. Um, that stencil, which isn't any good for us today. This one, which I quite like. I've got some card here that would be, I'm not going to throw it away because it might come in useful for a background for another page at some stage, but it's not uh, today. This is text, so you'd get a nice text image through that. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to say, if you haven't got a jelly plate, you've got no intention of ever buying one, you think it's just too expensive for, um, you know, what you want to do, then get, get some cards. I, I, I bet. Almost every one of you has got a supply of cardstock. It's like de rigueur, if you paint, you have to have cardstock. So get it out. This is the time to use your cardstock. Um, because that, you know, you tear it, it tears beautifully, you get a lovely edge, and you can stick that down onto your scrapbook, put some gesso over it, and then colour it up, and it really, it'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. Um, blank bag, don't know what that's doing some hearts, just various stencils really. Uh, this one's a nice one, dandelions. I might get Mr. Fix-It to sh cl shrink that down a bit because I quite like that. Um, just, just all sorts of things. Um, and when it comes to doing the topper, you know, what's actually on top of all this background, mid-ground and everything else, I thought that I might like to do um, a dress, a sort of fashion dress, but a vintage one. So I found this image on um, Google. I just put in vintage dressmaking patterns and there was loads, just, you know, choose what you want. Uh, so that was that. So I just copied it onto a piece of watercolour paper and painted it in. 
you don't need to do that. If you don't feel that you're going to get any enjoyment out of painting it, cut a bit out of a magazine. Cut a woman out of a magazine. It, it will be perfectly fine. Uh, I tried her in a different colourway on a, on a background, but I just didn't like it so much. So, but that's for another day. That's when we get all the background and everything done in. Done in. <laughs> Doing myself in. Right, I'm talking really quickly and it's still half past blinking the hour, whatever hour. It's coming, it's happening now. Right, so let's go for our first one. As I say, these haven't been out the tube for, well, obviously never been out the tube, but the tube hasn't been opened for a long, long time. So it's a, it's a bit of trial and error to begin with to get the right amount of of paint out. You get the feel for it after a while, but you know, I guess I should have practiced with these so as I didn't look such a mini if it didn't doesn't work. Um but I didn't. There's a little drop over there. So we'll give that a good braring. You alright Mr Fixer? Yeah. You're doing this on a photocopy of paper first off, are you? Delete. Delete paper. You get the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, when it's right, when you've got the right amount of paint, it sort of makes the right sound. Oh, that's weird, but it sort of sticks onto it. There's just too much paint on there. It's, um, can you pass me? No, it's here. This is just a cheap sketchbook from uh, Hobbycraft. But I don't really want to waste the waste the paint that's on here, so I'll just put it on there. See if I can pull some more up. I mean that's gorgeous in itself, isn't it? There's just way too much. Let's try that then. Let's just pull a flat print on some deli paper, see what happens. So just kind of stretch it out, put it on, smooth it out with your hands. This deli paper's got a line down the middle where it's been folded and just pull it off. Now you can see really that there's kind of too much ink on there because there's still a really good image left to pull. That's it. Well, look at that. I mean, just for our second image, it's glorious. Don't you think, guys? What does it mean? Mr. F, just tell you this briefly before I carry on. Yesterday, Mr. Fixit came in from where he keeps all manner of things and said, oh, look what I've found. <laughs> you know, usually it's, oh, yeah, that's lovely. Um, but when I looked, it was an indoor drying line thing. You know, like you attach it to one end and then it pulls out and there's four sort of strings and you attach it somewhere else. And... Um, he said, it'll come in useful when you're doing your jelly printing. And he's right, it will. You can hang that over the line. Very nice. Right, so what shall we do then? Let's put, um, let's put another colour on. So I obviously didn't need as much paint as I had last time. So a little bit less. This is... That paint isn't very healthy, I don't think. It looks a bit like poo. I, think that's, I don't think that's good. If it is that colour, then it isn't good. <laughs> no, but it's... it's uh, it should be alright. Do you reckon? Once it's sprayed out. And this um, gold, all the sort of oily stuff's risen to the top. So that's not like looking too good either. It'll be fine. <laughs> Let's bray this out and see what happens. Yeah. 
I've put everybody off this now, haven't I? <laughs> you're really hoping it doesn't work because you never want to see this ever again in your life. No, this isn't good. It's not good. I'm just going to have to ditch it. Where is the photocopy paper? Oh. Wherever I give it to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you gave me decent stuff, didn't you? This is just rubbish. You don't know it's going to be rubbish, do you? It's taking a bit more paint off there, guys. Just a little bit too much paint. Right, so this is copy of paper. Let's see what happens with this. Yeah, look, it's just... I'm, I'm going to pull another one with copy of paper and get rid of this because it's kind of like not my favourite ever. I must be honest, it's not. But at least you're getting familiar with the technique. I might have to take a wet wipe to that actually. Yeah. Still sections of that actually, it's quite nice. Uh, that was that one, wasn't it? Yeah. And the gold. The gold. I think it would be alright, I've got the um, oil out of it. I'm going to give that a bit of a clean with that one. No, it came out grainy, that's the word I was looking for. Not, not poo-like. <laughs> right, so that's, that's cleaned that anyway. Um, but, you know, as bad as it was, we've still got some nice little areas in there. So, let's put something groovy on. Enough already with those colours. So this is Electrotex Basics and it is Brilliant Yellow Green. Ooh. Yeah, that's looking nice. That's looking proper. And... I've got some of this really cheap Colourcraft paint, Colourcraft supply to schools and stuff, so it's um, it's quite cheap and cheerful stuff. I'll never dream of putting it near my fine art stuff. Um, let's see if that's enough for that one. It's obviously quite thin. Oh, that looks nice. Obviously, you'll have your own favourites, your own favourite colours and your own favourite uh, things that you want to use as a as a stencil or a mask or whatever. That's just got a little bit too much. We need to get the hang of how much paint to put out there. I'm going to take another little bit off. You'll get the hang of when it's enough. And I can't tell you when it's enough. You just kind of get the hang of it. So I think we'll use something now as a as a mask. Um, you know, what I was sort of saying to you before. Let's use the bubble wrap. And just stamp it down onto there. Pick it up. Uh, I mean, actually, in your sketchbook, you can use that as a stamp. Well, exactly. Even cheap paint isn't cheap. And it just adds some interest to that, really. Um, so let's, um, let's use a stencil, shall we, on the other side. Let's just go with the smaller holes down there. So we've got a sort of holy, a holy thing going on. So just leave that there, let's push down and get a piece of deli paper. Push that down. Let's 
Oops, things falling off the table. There we are. That's gorgeous, isn't it? It's really lovely. Yeah. I'm just going to bring that down to my uh, sketchbook. Might as well get the best out of it. So if I put another colour on now and then use that and it'll pull this up, won't it? Yeah. I think that's the idea. Let it dry, especially. Yeah, but I don't want to let it dry particularly. No. So I'm, just, I'm not going to clean that. I'm just going to put another colour over it. And let's see what happens. Right. Yeah, I think so. I don't see why it wouldn't. Yeah, I can't can't think off the top of my head why it wouldn't work. There we are, I'm just gonna pull another one because I don't see too much blue on it. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, Paula. I can't, I can't see why it wouldn't. Open up a whole new world to go with your arts. Um, art line of paint. So look at that. This, these are the holes that we put on a couple of pulls ago, but they're still on the. On the jelly plate, we've pulled them all up now. Jelly plate's clean pretty much, um, but they're still they're still there. So that's you know that was the first. Well, no, we had that one with stencil in place. Then we had this one. Then we had this one. And actually, the more competent you get, the you know, like I say, I haven't done this for ages. I should have done a test piece. I really should have done. Um, I'm just going to try and get all the bits. Up off there. Um, one thing that I think you are going to stop, Paula, that people will find incredibly useful is gesso. Um, you get through a heap of gesso doing this sort of thing. Karen Who? Karen. Um, yeah, that I was just trying to clear the. Uh, yeah, use it. I can reuse it. Yeah. So let's put some. Not enough there. Let's put a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Every time I see turquoise now, I think, oh, Mirage. Because <laughs> that's what Paula's um, uh, chalk paint, a fairy chic chalk paint, the beautiful turquoise in there is called Mirage. And so now every time I see turquoise, I think, oh, Mirage. I'm not sure I've got enough ink on there now. Well, I'm calling it ink, it's paint. I don't think I have. Let's go for the turquoise. These are all experiments that you, you'll have to do yourself. Um, and I'm just finding out now how much I've forgotten. Quite a bit is the answer to that. But you do need a brayer to roll it flat. So you've got a nice uh, even surface. Let's try that and let's put, why don't we put this bit of knitting on? Let's put that on there, press it down. See what that gives us. I'm thinking we haven't got enough ink. Oh, it's all right, is it? Is it on there? Okay. Um, what else? Can we put a bit of lace? Oh, let's try this bit of kitchen towel. 
See if I was telling you a lie or not. Put that up there. Smooth it on. Try not to move things once you've uh, once you've got them on. You shouldn't be able to. If you can move stuff, you've got too much paint on. <laughs> I wasn't lying. Um, and I'm just going to use this bit of uh, rickrap braid that came free with something like Molly Makes or something like that, some magazine. I'm just going to put that up there. Press it down. Should be using something other than the finger, which is fatter than the braid, because I don't think that's worked overly well. No, it's all right. It'll be near enough. It's just to give people a flavour. The flavour of jelly printing. Right, so let's see what a bit of knitting and a bit of kitchen towel and a bit of rickrack does. Yeah. Look at that kitchen towel, guys. That is just phenomenal. So we've got the knitting, we've got the uh, kitchen towel, and just there you'll see there's a little bit of rickrack, which uh, I've splotched with my big splotchy fingers. But I think you could say that kitchen towel is just... That's the revelation of the day. So presumably once you've bought your um, jelly plate, I want to do some browns because I want my picture, my, in my, my spread in my thing, to be quite browny. So I'll try the, this. I'm just going to some off the thing because it comes out green. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Onto what? Oh my god, kitchen towel. Kitchen towel's the idea. Yeah, if it comes out grainy, that's no good. No, I think it's alright. I'll have that bit then. No, no, it isn't, it's grainy. I don't really think this is the paint's fault, to be honest. They've been sat around for five, six years, so. I don't think you can blame the paint in this instance. Let's try this parchment. It's a sort of off-white colour. It's a Hobbycraft's own brand. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good, so let's put that on there. And let's put a bit of this on there. This isn't the first and last time that you will see me using a jelly plate. Um, it, pretty much every page that we do, I think, um, well, not every, but a lot of the pages will have a jelly printed uh, background. So you have to tune in probably tomorrow um, to see what the next stage is. How we build our page. Well, spread it's called. When you open it up and you've got two pages like that, so they refer to it as a spread. So I have to tune in to see what I've achieved with my jelly printing, what I'm going to use, how we're going to build the background up. Right, let's have a go with that. You can use photocopier paper for this. I've, I've just got jelly paper. It takes the print very well, so... I'll just carry on using it, but you know, you can use watercolour paper, as I say, if you want to paint something on top of it. In fact, I'll use watercolour paper in a minute. No, I have some. Look, see, the blue remains from the uh, kitchen towel. And we've got big blobs here where we haven't really mixed the paint properly. It's like a red sky at night, that one. Yeah, it does actually. 
I'm just going to go over that again. I, I think there's still enough paint in there. No, maybe not. I'll just add some teal to that. When all else fails, add teal, I think. You just can't go wrong. Karen says she could do this all day long and get lost in it. You and me both. And anybody that does this, because, oh yeah, that would be normal. Oh, what would happen if I did that? I mean, you can do it with leaves. You know, you go out your garden, collect some leaves up, do it with leaves, and the pattern you get is staggering. It's astonishing. But this is this is jelly plating 101. It gets better when you're printing two prints onto one piece of paper or three. Well, that looks like a holy mess. But I'm just wondering what's happening on the actual plate, if it actually looks any better than this. Yeah, I like that. That's right up my chuff. I really, really like that. It's quite grungy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull another print with deli paper just to get all this, uh, the marks off here. I think I've got two pieces there. Uh, just clean the doodah. Yeah, I've got two pieces there. Pull that off. So that's got something on it, but it's not wasted. It'll get used um, maybe th maybe this very next time that we do it. So let's put in something that's quite vibrant, like this green, for example. Um, and possibly, what should I put in with that? Oh, I'm going for teal. If I, if, if all, no, 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 that's not right. I'm not going for teal because I always do. I'm going to use this schminky red. And I'm just going to push it out there first in case it's got that funny oily business going on. But really, the most expensive thing about jelly printing is the jelly plate. And once you've got it, you've got it. You know, provided you look after it relatively carefully. I mean, this one's old. And I can assure you that the prints that, that I could pull off this would be very good if I could remember how to do it. It's a bit too much. Ooh, that's looking nice. So I'm going to put some texture on here. And then I'm going to use one of the um, prints that we've already pulled. I like that. That's looking nice. I'm getting some lines on here from my brayer. Well, I'm not surprised really because it's got something stuck on it. I'm just going to go over that and uh, that's looking lively. Wow, look at that. See, all these you can either use or you can tear bits out of to use with other things. Never ends. <laughs> Just keep creating stuff that you've got to find somewhere to keep. Right, so let's have a look at these. Yeah, I think so. Um, so you can put on whatever you like. Whatever floats your boat, really, pretty much. The only thing I would say is just be careful that you're not using anything that's too sharp because you'll damage your jelly plate and um, there's no getting it back. I did wonder if you, might, if you could microwave them and get them back, um, but I don't think you can. Let's just put a grid over here of sorts. So what that looks like. And we've got a gap in here, so um, just, just anything that's going to give you texture. Oh, so she's looking how to make a jelly plate Italian. Yeah, I have 
it, it is possible you can use gelatin and yeah they and, tend not to keep very well no they sort of uh, they, use a few times and then yeah, have to make a new one yeah they tend to break up but as a way to get you going to see if you like it um, definitely and if they do break up too badly I'm pretty sure you can put them in the microwave uh, and get them back again but not forever it won't, it won't do it forever so I'm going to use this piece here that we pulled that I thought was really lovely and grungy and let's just put this over the top Yeah, so when Paula gets up and going with her art uh, line of paints and accessories, I'm pretty sure she's going to be doing gesso. And after we've put our background on, the next thing we need is gesso. So start harassing her for the gesso. So there we are. I've got too much red in that one. I just have to... I could use this one. Mm. Don't really want to. Yeah, you do end up with a never ending amount of prints. Because don't chuck them, even the ones that you think haven't been successful. Um, they might just have that little bit of a colour in that you want. It's really quite interesting when you start getting all different um, patterns in. This needs to be cleaned now. When I first got this, it didn't need to be cleaned this often. Um, maybe I was just better at it then. I don't know. It's possible. I think I did always use golden opens with it, which might, uh, might give you a better print. I don't know. But by the time I see you again, you can rest assured that I will have practiced. So, yeah, you might wish to wear gloves, actually, for this. It's a bit, it's a bit dirty. So if you're not going to buy a jelly plate and you're not going to go uh, jelly plate printing with me, um, then get looking out for all your old, thick or thin cards, paper, stock, things that you're willing to rip up. Uh, old magazines, see who's got any magazines near you that they're going to be putting on Facebook, you know, come and collect these good home magazines or whatever it may be. And um, just see. Oh, yeah, I'll show you this as well. Could you, could you give that a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a fettle, yeah. Um, the other thing that I need to wipe this off of my... I think actually my sketchbook has uh, come out best today. It's got some lovely backgrounds in it. Some really nice colours in it. So, yeah. When we come to do the background, the reason that I'm sort of saying about thick card and whatever it, and gesso is we want to have some um, texture, actual texture, not just the image of texture uh, on our on our um, background, in our background. So, you know, torn up pieces of card stuck on or brilliant um, bits of lace, anything, because we're probably going to gesso over most of it. So nothing that you're too precious about. Uh, although you can use clear gesso, of course. But the, a good way of getting texture into your background, and I'm sure you've all done this before, is dyeing um, serviettes, napkins. They're just the ordinary um, white napkins, 50 napkins from Sainsbury's, I think they were two quid. Um, leave them in the three ply while you dye them and I actually dyed mine in my roasting tin <laughs> it's ceramic it's come clean it's all right don't worry about it but I'm I guess you're not supposed to do that all right if you haven't got any dyes or anything that you want to use to dye your pieces with 
then I suggest you go to Pound Shop, Poundland, whatever it is, buy a set of cheap kitty uh, felt tip pens, snap them open, put the inside bit in water, and you'll get 12 different colours to use. So make sure that you have got a clothesline or something that you can hang them on because they're wet tissue. And they're very, you know, uh, fragile at that stage. So we did several of these, um, all different colours. We didn't have different vats of colour. We just had the same one that we kept changing out. Um, and what I intend to do with these, you know, some lovely ones there, gorgeous, is to rip them up like this, like this in here. And attach them to the page with glue, just rippling them up as I go. So we get some nice texture. And, you know, we'll have chosen the colour that we want. So we then have the choice of do you go over it with a white gesso or do you go over it with clear and allowing you to see all of your background. I like to go a little bit of both because there's always something on there that I want to see. You know, I've chosen it specifically. I want to see it. Um, but the white gesso is nice also. It gives a real vintage uh, style to things. So that's that. You can have those ready anytime you like. Just uh, buy some white napkins. Um, these are my bits of, of watercolour card that I'm going to jelly print today come heck or high water. I've got a right mess everywhere, so I might as well carry on doing my jelly um, printing. So, they had a little, yeah, I should say that, you know, things like this, this is a colour chart for actually pastel company. You know, if you tear those out, or even just one strip of it out, it's really nice. Go to home base or B&Q or wherever your local do-it-yourself shop is and get the, you know, the paint chip cards. Brilliant for it. Really, really brilliant. Just start thinking kind of outside the box a little bit while I start thinking how to make the jelly plate work the way I want it to work. Um, and I will see you here tomorrow at four o'clock and we'll start actually putting some background in. I've got some great ideas for the, the front piece. Um, what we're going to stick on to that and getting... Um, some space in there to actually journal. So I shall see you tomorrow at four. Thank you so much for joining me. Tomorrow will be even more exciting because we're doing a sort of um, corset, which will be fun. So I'll see you then. Bye.